Hi guys, today we're going to start chapter 9, lesson 5 in your science book. We're going to talk about how are electricity and magnetism transformed. All right, today we're going to read pages 415 and 416, and we're going to answer questions 1 through 4 together. You are going to have an essential question for this week. Your essential question is, what is an electromagnet and how does it work? What is an electromagnet and how does it work? So let's start by reading page 415 and 416. Electric current and magnetism. Ordinary magnets work without an electric current, and electric currents can work without magnets. Scientists used to think that magnetism and electricity did not affect each other. In 1820, Danish scientist Hans Christian Ørsted was running electric current through a wire. He noticed that the magnet needle on a nearby compass moved each time he turned on the current. Remember last week we talked about when you have a compass and you put it towards a magnet, it's going to move towards that magnet instead of pointing towards Earth's ge geographic north because it's going being pulled towards that magnet. So every time he turned the current on when it was going through that wire, it pulled that, comp that needle of his compass towards the magnet. So that was telling him that something was happening. He wondered why that happened. Orsted realized that the flowing electric current was producing a magnetic field. The magnetic field caused the compass needle to move. Orsted saw that the forces of electricity and magnetism have a lot in common. Electromagnets. Hans Christian Orsted's discovery of the relationship between electricity and magnetism led to an important invention, the electromagnet. An electromagnet is a magnet that only works when electricity is provided. To make an electromagnet, you pass an electric current through a coiled wire. The moving current creates a magnetic field. The wire loses its magnetism when the current is stopped. You can change the strength of an electromagnet in several ways. You can make the magnet stronger by coiling the wire around an iron core, such as an iron nail. You can also add more coils of wire. The more coils you add, the stronger the magnetic field. Another way to make an electromagnet stronger is by increasing the amount of electric current running through the wire. So here's the important information I want you to get out of this reading. The forces of electricity and magnetism have a lot in common. They're not as different as we once thought. Think back, what do we know about an electric current? There needs to be a continuous flow from the energy source. The circuit cannot have any breaks in it. So if there's a break, you're not going to get your energy flow, and then your electromagnet isn't going to work. Okay. Hans Christian Orsted discovered that the flowing electric current was producing a magnetic field. This led to the invention of the electromagnet. An electromagnet is a magnet that only works when electricity is provided. To make an electromagnet, you pass an electric current through a coiled wire. Um, there is a picture of this on page 416 if you want to see kind of what that looks like, if that helps you understand what an electromagnet is. The wire loses its magnetism when the current is stopped. So again, when there's a break in that circuit, it's going to lose its electromagnetism. Um, sorry, I lost my place. You can change the strength of an electromagnet in three ways. One, you can make the magnet stronger by coiling the wire around an iron core, such as an iron nail. And if you look at the picture on page 416, you're going to see that that wire is uh, around a bolt. So that's making it a little bit stronger. Number two, you can also add more coils to the wire. So if you were to coil more of that wire or add more wire to the picture on 416, that might make that a little stronger. And number three, another way is by increasing the amount of electric current running through the wire. Okay, do you understand? If not, message me for help so I can help you before we move on to the next questions. Take a brain break, and when you come back, we're going to answer questions one through four together. Bye, guys.